Welcome back. Um, Cecilia, let, let's leave the Super Eagles and, and talk about Ghana. Uh, when Avram Grant um, came on the scene, he was talking about, yeah, I, I want to see those players that um, you said were not going to play for us again. Um, I mean, people like Ke Ke Kevin Prince Boateng, Suleiman Montari, especially Suleiman Montari. Uh, but, but the list came out. Um, not really the squad. Go, I mean, the squad, not really the team, final. the final one. But those guys didn't even make it. And I mean, what, what could have happened behind the scenes? Well, I don't know if uh, some politics were actually done behind the scenes because if you check, these players are suspension because of what he did at the World Cup in Brazil. But the coach was willing to bring he them said, in. Precisely, he said everyone is welcome, that he's going to accommodate Maybe all he got players. A phone call. It could, that's why I said politicking behind the scenes. Really we, ne we, we, we never can tell. Come on, it happens everywhere. Politics will always merge with football. There's nothing you can do about it. Especially when you have some players who feel they're actually bigger than the country and they feel they can talk to the management whichever way they like because they are bigger stars. They have this money. They play the biggest league in the world. Usually, it gets to affect them. So foreign coaches too have them. their limitations. That is it. There are times they feel, okay, look, I understand what you want to do. You want to bring the best out of the Ghanaian football, but we can easily do without these big uh, players. So in Montari, I, I think he still has so much to offer for Ghana. And same thing with Kevin Prince, but that's a player I felt was really outstanding at the World Cup, despite his attitude and all that. But I think he should have been invited. The, Michael Essien also was a shock to me. I, I, He's, we know he's getting older and all that, but sometimes you just need this experience for you to back up these players, for them to be part of the squad. But what Avram Grant did was to stick with the players that qualified Ghana for the Nations Cup. I think he believed that these players can definitely you know, win the trophy for Ghanaians, for the Blacksters, if okay. they were able to qualify Ghana for the Nations Cup. Although they actually struggled a little bit while they were qualifying. But I think the experience of of Kevin Prince, Boateng, the experience of Michael Lissian is actually needed for them. But since he feels they cannot make it, then whatever squad is okay. going to go, 31 already, 23, by 1st week of January, he will cut it down to 23. All right. I don't think he'll be able to bring them in at that time. Okay, all right, so um, that, that's just it. Um, we um, talked about the uh, Black Stars of Ghana. Uh, for the last four editions of the Nations Cup, they always come in as favorites. Um, they, they, they've, not, they've got to the final on, on two occasions, but in the last four editions, uh, they've not been able to win. All right, when we started, we talked about some uh, sporting moments in 2014. We talked about, um, uh, we told you that you could tell us um, periods in 2014 you felt was a high point for Nigeria. Uh, Cecilia, we had a discussion before we came on, and we chose two particular events. Um, a, a lot happened in 2014, but this one we're going to show you. Um, there's no way you can talk about Nigeria sports in 2014 and not talk about blessing or Kagbari. There's many to choose from, but we chose this one. Can you quickly explain why? <laughs> Victory of the 100 meters in London. Can you tell me the reason why? I think that's, that's really a great one because if you look at the stars that competed yes. with blessing or Kagbari, uh, Blessing and Kagbari, Price. precisely. Then uh, you have a. Moriela Hore, Tiana Madsen. Precisely. And um, which other? Kamelita uh, Jetta. Jetta. Three, all of them. All. Four, four of them in there. And usually, Nigerians do say that whenever you have these top stars, Blessing no Kagbari doesn't usually perform. cannot perform. So when she was able to do this one in London, which was really a huge one. In July? And if you, in July. And if you take your mind back to Paris also, one of the Diamond League events in 200 oh, meters, yeah, where you also have yeah, Shelly and yeah, Fraser Price, you also have. Alice and Phyllis, and these were world champions and three-time Olympic uh, gold medalists. This is the race. This is the race. Of course, she was able to. Can we, if we can just enjoy this, right? <laughs> I think I'm okay. Lots of uh, if something is good, you see it twice. Let, yeah. Let's let's um, <laughs> let, take a look at this, enjoy it, and um, we'll come back for more on sports this morning. Oh, good start by uh, Fraser Price, and then she stumbled a bit, and Jetta's coming away now, Okabari as well, and right in the inside, Ahore, Ahore is going well, but here comes Okabari and Jetta, Okabari gets it from uh, Jetta, I tell you, that uh, was 11.02, a little bit of a stumble by Shelly and Fraser Price right at the start, but uh, really at the end, um, Blessing Okabari came through very, very solidly into a slight headwind of 0.2 metres per second, Jetta couldn't quite catch her. At least that's how I thought it went. And uh, Okabari 11.01 confirmed as the winner. A tight finish. Jetta did get second, 11.03.
but certainly the first half of the race Jetta was found wanting wasn't she and Madden there a little bit of stumble there in the fourth lane from the right and she loses momentum at that point yeah she lost an awful lot of momentum she knew it was gone then up against opposition like that sandwich between Okabare the eventual winner and Jetta she was never going to come back and you can see her there dropping in the background giving up in effect Jetta I'm surprised she's beaten here by the Nigerian I have to say that's uh, from Jetta is a rare loss with the championship three weeks away that little stutter, she left the blocks well, but then just stuttered and stumbled a little bit, and all of a sudden the rest had gone. And Jetta, well, she I don't know whether she saw Okabari. She certainly did in the final stages, but Okabari... All right, uh, welcome back. Sister, let me quickly turn myself to a prophet. Okay. Just um, keep that in your mind. Just what you just saw, keep it in your mind, and hopefully, I prophesy, you're going to see that in 2016 at the Olympics in Rio, and she's going to beat all of those ladies because those ladies definitely will still be the ones she's going to be competing. And since she could do that in London, London. she's going to do it in Rio, and we're going to get a gold. So just definitely. write it somewhere. <laughs> Yemi said that. All right, let's move on. Uh, yeah, she said that's what she's aiming at. Yes, <laughs> a gold medal at the so. Olympics. <laughs> all right. Um, English Premier League, uh, you, you talked about it. Uh, maybe we could just see the fixtures uh, as we try to wrap things up on the show this morning. English Premier League, what do you think will happen to the top teams? Let's just look at it. Talk about Manchester City, um, Arsenal and Chelsea. Talk about those three teams as we try to wrap things up. Yeah, okay, let's start with Chelsea. Let's start with Chelsea. Now, Chelsea is facing West Ham. Remember the last time they played, it was a goalless draw. And of course, Mourinho said uh, Sam Allardyce was playing 19th century football because at that time, you know, they needed to actually bounce back. Mm -hmm. And at least when, when they actually got that goalless draw, it, it was actually a turning point for West Ham because they were almost battling relegation. This time around, they are in top four. A sh shocker, you would say. But for me, for some Aladdin, I think he would rather go to Stamford Bridge and not want to play another 19th century football, but at least to go there. He's got some brilliant attack uh, right now with that Enna Valencia, who is actually uh, on, on song uh, right now. Uh, Sako and, and some Caro and the Caro. All of them, he's got all his players back. I think West Ham really wants to go to Chelsea and see how they can okay. get, get on. Let's talk about City. For Manchester City, it will be a tricky one. But I think Manchester City, I mean, against Burnley, they're, they're just. De against West Brom, they're definitely not going to be a, a, a difficult one for them. I think Manchester City will just win this one because this is an opportunity for them to get all the results they really want to get. They, they are condemned to win because Chelsea will be playing earlier. So if Chelsea wins, they have to. They have to and win if Chelsea, to keep up the pressure. If Chelsea loses for any reason or, or they slip up, uh, they Joint know top. it's more important to, to win. And, and let's talk about Arsenal, most um, vilified team. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of... I mean. Uh, they've been lapooned by everybody, but um, this will have the chance to, I mean, close in on the top four uh, today. Of course, if, if you check, I, I think the last time Arsenal actually won the league, they were at Christmas period, they were at sixth position, right? And they went on to win the league. That could just happen. And this might Especially just be... Especially playing against the, Queen's Park Rangers. Precisely, and they're playing at home. This might just be the turning point for Arsenal to see how they can, you know, close in on Man U and close in on, you know, West Ham. Because West Ham in fourth... That's a shocker for me because, well, they are playing at Stamford Bridge today. I think they will just drop that point and, of course, may go down and you have the real team who are usually at the top four going up. <laughs> okay, so um, that, that, that's it for you. Um, the games uh, today in the English Premier um, League. Let, let me quickly run through it for you as we try to wrap things up. Chelsea take on West Ham, Burnley take on Liverpool, Crystal Palace take on Southampton, Everton take on Stoke City, all games, all matches we play today. Uh, Leicester take on Sports, Manchester United take on Newcastle, Sunderland take on All City, Swansea take on Aston Villa, West Brom take on Manchester City, and Arsenal take on uh, Queen's Park Rangers. Cecilia, before we leave, I mean, we can't also not talk about this man when you talk about what happened in 2014, Arnold Caudry. And case in point, ITTF World Cup, World Cup in, Germany. in Germany. Yeah, yeah. I think this is the man. Two hundred. Game against world number one. That's it. Two hundred and thirty-seven. Round of sixteen games. It, I mean, this was really the turning point because even the Germans had to stand up and they started clapping for him. Towards the end. They, towards the end. They said they would love to see him see again. See him again and again and again. I don't know, Kodja. I think he's definitely my athlete for the Started the year at... Um, 237. And he's now... <laughs> 30. Hampton <laughs> Lee. Okay. So we'll leave you with this. Uh, <laughs> let, let's allow you to enjoy uh, what Arunov Kodja has been able to do. The rise and rise and rise <laughs> of... Tennis star Aaron Okoto. So, sports this one comes your way again next week. To then, bye bye. And there it is. Game point. Yeah. There it is.
Davis, 11 to 8, 2 to 3, Arona. to avoid this and I was just do so many kinds of different spins with that and now but here we go typical Zhang Zika waiting for the last moment to score this match nonetheless he did it Incredible performance by Kadri Aruna. He's getting standing ovations here. What a tournament, maybe the tournament of his life here. Putting up a great fight against the world champion. And I'm happy to seeing him again in the future. Certainly someone to keep an eye out on.